Hi friends, hope you are fine. In this video, let us understand what is cell signaling and what are the four types of cell signaling. Let's begin with the basics of cell signaling. Cells communicate using chemical signals. Suppose this is a sending cell. The sending cell releases chemicals which are called as signaling molecules or lichens. The target cell will be having a receptor that is specific for this ligand. This ligand binds to the receptor of the target cell, causing a conformational change, activating many proteins inside, ultimately leading to a cellular response. Let me make it more clear. On binding of this ligand to the receptor, this receptor undergoes a conformational change, activating many proteins at the intracellular level, finally leading to a cellular response. Cellular response is often a gene expression, a gene suppression, production of certain hormones, ultimately leading to cellular response like cell growth, cell division, cell differentiation, etc. A non-target cell doesn't have this receptor, therefore this lichen has no effect on a non-target cell. Now let us define cell signaling. We are made up of 30 to 40 trillion cells. To keep us as a sophisticated, elegantly designed multicellular organism, the cells must communicate. Even in the case of unicellular organisms like bacteria, it should communicate with the environment and also with other microbes or other bacterium. So cell signaling simply means cell communication. It is the ability of a cell to receive, process and transmit signals with its environment and with itself. It's a basic property of cells essential for survival of an organism. Now let us see what are the extracellular signals. There are physical agents like light, voltage, mechanical pressure, temperature, all are extracellular signals. And of course, chemicals are also extracellular signals. Now let us understand four types of signaling. And this is based on distance traveled by the signaling molecule or ligand. First one is autocrine signaling. As the term indicates, auto means self in autocrine signaling, the cell targets itself. The ligand that is released by the cell is having a receptor on the same cell itself, actually causing a self-activation or a self-stimulation. It's very common in immune cells, just like this inflammatory cells that secretes interleukin-2 activates the cell itself for division or differentiation. In the case of T helper cells, on activation, it secretes cytokines that is having receptor on T helper cell itself, causing its division and differentiation. And second type of signaling is called as direct cell-to-cell -cell signaling. This is through gap junctions in animals and plasmodus meta in plants. Gap junctions are also called as communication junctions that allows passage of small molecules and ions between cells, thus maintaining an intercellular communication. The same is the case with plasmodus meta in plants. These are fine cytoplasmic strands through which small molecules can and ions can pass through, thus maintaining an intercellular communication between adjacent cells. The third type of signaling is called as paracrine signaling. Para means nearby. Here a cell targets a nearby cell. A secretory cell releases ligands that is having receptors on nearby target cell, causing a response in nearby target cell. Classical example is synaptic signaling. As you see, during nerve impulse transmission, in the presynaptic cell, these neurotransmitters are released as a result of electrical impulse and this released neurotransmitter is having a receptor on postsynaptic cell and this, this receptor binds to this neurotransmitter and that causes cellular response within this postsynaptic cell like opening of ion channels or changing of membrane potential, etc. So this type of signaling is called as paracrine signaling. 
And the final type is called as endocrine signaling. Classical example is in the case of hormones. In endocrine signaling, the center cell or the signaling cell secretes lichens into the bloodstream that travels a lot and having a response in a distant target cell. As you see, hypothalamus releasing dopamine, somatostatin, many hormones, uh, thyroid secreting many hormones. These hormones are having activity at a distant target cell. In the case of hormones, there are two types of hormones. Water-soluble hormones or like insulin, which is a protein hormone or a peptide hormone that cannot cross this plasma membrane. It will be having a receptor on the cell surface. Then this receptor transduces the signals to the inside, activating many proteins inside, finally leading to a cellular response by means of gene expression. Whereas in the case of steroid hormones or lipid-soluble hormones like estrogen, progesterone, etc., it can diffuse through this plasma membrane and it will be having receptors either in the cytoplasm or nucleus and can directly activate gene expression leading to cellular response. So let me summarize. There are four types of signaling. First one is autocrine signaling, where it is a kind of self-signaling or self-stimulation. Examples include T-cell proliferation by cytokines and secretion of interleukin-1 by macrophages. And the second type is called as direct cell-to-cell -cell signaling. That is through gap junctions in animals and plasmodesmata in plants. And the third one is paracrine signaling, where a cell targets a nearby cell. Classical example is synaptic signaling. And finally, endocrine signaling. Classical example is hormones released into the bloodstream, travels a lot and having an effect on a distant target cell. Hope you understand the four types of cell signaling. In the next video, we'll be discussing six types of signaling molecules if you find this video useful, please consider subscribing our channel. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com.